Hi, and welcome to this video. My name is Janis, and I want to share with you some super interesting technique of using the Nord Drum with Ableton Live, which expands your playing and expression possibilities quite a lot. So for example, uh, I have a sound here on this pad that is bass sound, and now with Ableton, I'm able to play a melody, like a random melody, with different pitches on just one pad. Or I can also record a little bass loop. And now, while this loop keeps playing on one pad, I can select another pad by choosing track 6 inside Ableton Live and play another melody, but again it's only going to be stored on pad 6, while the other melody also keeps playing. This way you basically turn the Nord Drum into six synthesizers with six keyboards because you can play or select six different pitches for all six different sounds, which brings up crazy possibilities. It's a lot of fun to use and I just want to walk you through the process of how you can set this up for yourself. My Nord Drum I have a patch with a couple of different sounds and the connection is important because you need both MIDI in and MIDI out. So in my case MIDI out is going to the MIDI in of my interface and the MIDI out of the interface is connected to the MIDI in of the Nord Drum. And you could also use some simple MIDI to USB adapter where you have also those both connections and you just plug in the USB connection into your computer directly. Also, you should quickly check your MIDI settings if you go to live and settings or preferences and then under link tempo MIDI, you have your device. In my case, it's audio fuse. It could also be the name of your interface if you connect it with the interface or of your MIDI to USB adapter and track needs to be enabled both for the input and the output. Now, the Nord Ram works in a way that you can send MIDI to it and do quite some powerful things. So if you create a MIDI track, and I'm going to use the external instrument here. You can also simply select a MIDI output, but I just prefer to have the instrument. So you send it to Audio Fuse Channel 1, for example. That means that once I, for example, create a kick drum pattern, because pad 1 is a kick drum, I'm going to sequence the kick drum from Ableton Live. And if I change the channel to channel 2, I'm going to trigger the bass sound. Same for all six pads. So you can actually set up six tracks like this and send individual sequences to all individual channels. So you can have one for channel 1, channel 2, then so on. And for all of those six individual pads, you can create individual melodies. So let's actually keep the kick drum the way it is. We don't need a melody here, but we could then use Oh, it still has the sequence. Make like a little bass line, like super simple, just like some offbeat, but we move a couple of tones up and down. Let's uh, play it. And normally, if you want to play something like this, you would need to use two more pads for the bass pitches because now the bass line has like three pitches and you would need to have the bass sound for example on this pad on, and on this pad as well so you can play this melody which is super fine but now as soon as you bring in a third melody there's you reach a limitation really quickly so I was asking myself for a long time okay is there a way of also playing like this so if I can play though all those individual sequences by myself and it's actually possible because there's one setting inside the Nord Drum that you can access by pressing Shift and MIDI, which is local or called local. That means that the Nord Drum can produce sounds locally once you hit the pad and you can also change the sound with those controls. And if you select off, you basically bypass the Nord Drum controls completely. So it only sends out MIDI. Everything else it receives from some external instrument, for example, Ableton. So let's check this out. Um, if we exit, we're not going to hear any sound, but what we can do now is that, for example, for track 2, where we had the bass, we can enable the, or we can actually arm the track for receiving MIDI. And now, out of a sudden, we play only the second sound, but with all six pads. And we can refine the tones by, for example, using MIDI effects. So if we use a scale 
plugin. We can uh, make sure that we're only in Dorian, for example. And this can be done for all six channels independently. And it's a bit difficult here to change the intervals. I mean, you can actually see there's the first one. The second one could also be then already the third. You could move this one to the fifth if you want to play fifth with this note. So you can just check where you trigger the notes um, and refine it this way. So you have larger intervals, but you're restricted to one octave here. And there's some super cool... Max for Life device from friend Toby Ableton drummer, where you can simply change the MIDI notes. I think um, I have it under my user library. Yeah, here you can see it. It looks like this MIDI note tuner where you basically uh, determine which note gets sent in it. Then you can change it and you can create quite large intervals. So if this is some interesting option for you, just check it out. I'm going to put a link down below in the description. But I can always consider using, for example, a pitch effect. So you could use melodic sounds on those different pads, but maybe one of them is like an octave higher and you can create quite orchestral arrangements this way. Actually, let's quickly try it. All the time you want to change something on the pad, you need to turn local on because otherwise you can't even change the preset. And on three, I have some simple synth sound where we could actually now for, I mean, now we're playing pad two. So, for example, if we change it to pad 3 for this synthesizer, we could just pitch it an octave higher and also at the scale plugin again. In this case would be Dorian. So here we have those notes and if we change to this track, you have to make sure that only one is enabled, otherwise you trigger two at the same time, which can actually also be a cool option sometimes if that's uh, interesting to you. So here we get the lower pitches. And now it also starts on different notes because the basic MIDI notes here are basically like a major scale. So if you want this to be in sync, all those pads should be on the same MIDI note, which you can also find under MIDI. So here you see the note. Oh, and global is off again. <laughs> so I can't make any changes. Uh, local, I mean, if I change it back to on, I can actually go to the note and here you see these are different ones and if you want to have a patch for example with six similar sounds completely in tune but just different uh, intervals and maybe octaves you need to make sure that here it's the same note for all of those. And 60 is a C which is also helpful because it makes navigating with the clips here easier. If you're on another note you always have some issues knowing where you are so note 60 is a good foundation here. And it doesn't stop here because you can also mess a bit with your expression. So for example, Ableton 12 has this amazing MIDI effect CC control and also the amazing MIDI effect, which was already part of Ableton before called expression control. And here you can, for example, use your velocity for controlling different parts of the sound because you can use your velocity for controlling the dynamic filters. And also there's a setting for decay, but just as an example, let's find out on which setting we have the delay and then we actually control with our velocity how much of the delay we get. So we have to go to the Nordram manual. Here you see delay amount is 47. So we go back to Ableton and for, let's see, custom B, we select 47. It's just the MIDI number and map the velocity of our expression control to custom B. And now the louder we play or the higher the velocity, the more delay we should get. By the way, in case you enjoyed this video and also feel like supporting the channel, you can quickly hit the like button and be also warmly invited to subscribe because I have many videos about the Nordram and Ableton Live on my channel. Also some online classes, so you can find them on my website. I'm going to link it down below in the description and sound packs actually for the Nordram. And also I'm offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you have some specific ideas of making, for example, some drum setup with electronics about tr triggering specific sounds, I really like helping you with it. So also you find all information on my website. Again, links are down below in the description.
The examples I choose are not the most musical ones, but I try to find those that make things obvious. Um, and I think you get the point. And this works for everything. So you can basically check this list and see what you want to modulate by, in this case, your velocity. And it's going to do it. So you could also check, for example, the distortion amount. Uh, it's the 23. Could also be fun. So you change this number to 23. And now we get more distortion the louder we play. Or it also works the other way around if you invert the curve. So now we should get distortion with for the low velocity strokes. Which actually creates some weird artifacts here. It wasn't the most amazing example, but I just wanted to show you that you can turn around the curve. And uh, then it actually has the opposite effect. Actually with the delay, we can try it once more. So we should get a lot of delay especially if we increase this to 100%. Interesting. Don't know where this little glitch comes from. I mean, this is a thing. Once you do those things, sometimes a certain sound parameter reacts to a MIDI information in a weird way, so it makes a glitch, so you have to tweak it a bit. But just for showing you the basic functionality, I think this is pretty awesome. Or if you're into random values, you can also change the source to random, which gives you some random values per trigger. I'm a super huge fan of this. It basically means that, let's actually check another parameter. Maybe this time we go for de decay because it's uh, quite obvious to hear that. So we go to tone decay, which is value 50. And so here we change it to 50. And now we should get random decay values. Actually, now we have the delay still on because it always saves the last setting, which is some thing that can sometimes be a bit confusing. So the delay should be off. Ah. Yeah, now we hear that we get those random decay values, which can be a super fun sound effect. And you might ask yourself, okay, why do we actually change this to local? Why don't we leave local on? It should still work. And you get a double trigger, that's the problem. So if I turn local on, the sound gets actually also most of the time louder because you get two signals, once from pressing the pad here and then from Ableton sending back the sound to the pad, which often causes a louder stroke. And also you see it's not perfectly aligned and there's a tiny bit of latency which is also some little issue that can occur. For me it's fine if I choose my fastest buffer size which you can always find under your settings and the audio. So actually this is already really bad as a buffer size for me but I'm just using my screen recording where this is a bit more stable. Usually I have this on 64 and um, there you can try how far you can go. And also those external instruments give you a latency setting. Some of this never helps me, but here also the track delay you can play with in case you feel there's some delay which can happen. And if you have both sounds enabled, you actually hear that they are not perfectly in sync right now. It's really obvious because I'm at 256 uh, buffer size, but at 64 those would be really close to each other, but still you get a double trigger and that's why it's a wise idea to turn local on and off. So again, this is a little bit of tweaking that you have to do all the time and it can easily confuse you. But I mean, you can see it opens up a complete new world of expression possibilities. And as I mentioned, the examples were not the most amazing ones or most musical ones, but I think it's really particular how you use it. So knowing that it's possible, you can now, maybe you think of, okay, I always thought it would be so cool, so cool to use my velocity for controlling maybe the pitch, which is what I what, what happened here on this one track in the intro. Actually, I didn't show you this, which was basically uh, track two, the bass sound. Actually, now on this pad, patch, it's all bass sounds, but you can use a random plugin, put it in front of the Dorian, and then it just basically with a higher chance jumps around those notes. And now let's go back to normal Dorian.
And again, there's a super cool device from Toby, Ableton Drummer, which is called MIDI Note Sequencer. What's the name exactly? It's um, Melody Trigger, this one, where you can actually create a melody sequence or a melodic sequence. It looks really intimidating on first sight, but here you basically program a sequence and it moves per step. So the first time you hit the pad, it plays the first pitch you select, then the second time the second pitch. So you can actually play the same sequence over and over with just one drum pad. So I'm going to link it down below in the description. Also, he made a video where he explains this in detail. So I don't, I'm not going to do it here right now, but just be known that this is a super awesome device. And instead of having those individual tracks, which can look a bit confusing, you can also simply use one drum rack, which is something I really like. So you make a new MIDI track and select some empty drum rack. And now you can basically play a pad, C, uh, um, because local is on, yeah. C inside the drum rack, you need to arm the track where you trigger the note, it's this one. So here you can basically also insert the external instrument and say where it sends the MIDI back to. So in this case, it would be channel one. And so we get the sound and can make the refinements to this uh, one pad here. So you could also do the MIDI editing. You could now change the pitch, for example. You could, oh, it needs to go here. <clears throat> make it higher, an octave, for example. You can add the randomness or maybe with a scale. So you get some on this pad, for example, the random melodies. So for this pad, you have the random melodies. And then for the other ones, you can also use simple sounds where you don't do anything apart from triggering. But in the end, you only have this one drum rack that makes everything look a bit more smooth. But as soon as you're working with melodic sequences that have more than one pitch or have uh, have like dedicated pitches not the random plus the scale option then you normally need like individual tracks and i hope this inspires you to try something you thought would be so cool to do with the nordrum i think this opens up lots of possibilities and i didn't even mention the basic sequencing stuff where you can also use lfos but i have some more videos about that actually i'm going to link you one here that is about sequencing the nordrum and also here's a playlist with all my nordrum videos in case you're interested Apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon in this channel. Bye.